coast of Nigeria is a fishing town called Brass. It was given its name by the first British traders to land here. Not because there were metals to be found, but according to legend, because a word sounding like brass was used by natives to greet the newcomers. Unknown to the British, though, in the native language, the word actually meant not welcome. It's easy to imagine that European visitors to the Niger Delta today could expect a similar response. For some 40 years after the discovery of oil within sight of these communities, nothing much here has changed. Cut off from the outside world by thousands of miles of waterways, the people of the Akasa clan live today as their ancestors might have done. But if things don't change, and change soon, they may not be able to survive much longer. The Akasa clan territory spans around 450 square kilometers of mangrove swamps, rainforest, and a maze of waterways. Water dominates everything. The Niger is the 11th longest river in the world, and it provides the only means of travel between the island settlements, flooding them during the rainy season. The river is a source of food, drinking water, and a communal toilet. The lack of safe drinking water is one of the many health problems here. Measles is a killer, so is diarrhea. One in five children die in infancy. Nearby, someone lies seriously ill. In the past, the Akasa have fought illness through rituals and superstition. Their knowledge of medicines is restricted to those they can make from plants and fungi found in the wild. But these are disappearing because the rainforest in which they grow is also disappearing. Hundreds of miles away, vast stocks of timber are yesterday's rainforest, and the markets are hungry for even more. With few mature trees left to cut, the target has become the next generation of trees. Yet the people living on the Niger Delta depend on these trees for boats, without which there can be no transport or fishing, the Akasa's main occupation. If the trees don't survive, nor will the Akasa people. Help is needed, but the Western world has become familiar with the cries of poverty from Africa. And anyway, the Akasa people are surrounded by failed reminders of the aid they've had in the past. Grandiose plans for sanitation, schools, hospitals and power plants today lie unfinished and abandoned. Also here, the remains of buildings put up more than a century ago by the first English traders. Those early pioneers thrived on the culture of self-help. 150 years on, the same values may well be the best way forward for the Akasa. For the new approach being taken in the Niger Delta, is to use overseas aid to work with the local people, to help them recognize the causes of their problems and then help them find their own solutions. It's by working with the people that we came to identify these things. The people now, having identified their problems, started to think about what to do about this problem. The Akasa Community Development Project is funded through charity Pro Natura, and it's encouraging the people to work together for the first time. This new way has now given us a sense of direction. It has given us a sense of belonging, in fact. We had no planning. We are doing our things, self-help projects on, without planning, without proper direction. But now with the Akasa Development Project, we now know where we are heading to. We plan, and we all meet together and discuss. We're having more confidence within ourselves. Hey, Tola! So what is it that the project is helping the Akasa to plan? One issue that's central to their way of life concerns fishing. For most of the Delta people, fishing dictates daily routines and provides their main food. It's dependent on the tide and takes place regardless of time of day or weather. 
Once landed, there will be work smoking the fish and mending damaged nets. But first of all, there must be a good catch. For some while, the Akasa fishermen had been noticing that their catches were not always as good as they once were. They also recognized that they were catching in their nets fish that were either too small or that they didn't want. What they hadn't been able to do was to confront the problem and to resolve it. Before now, the people didn't trust each other. People with similar interests rarely worked together, and if they did, nothing was achieved because of mistrust between them. We can identify the areas of their problems and work on them. But that is not all. They see it as a significant problem. So in their planning workshops and all that, they've actually taken steps to control fishing. They know, for instance, that uh, certain nets have a mesh size that does not make for good fishing. And so they've banned them because uh, it catches indiscriminately. So that is one step forward. Changes are not being imposed either by the outsiders or by the community's chief, as might once have been the case. Encouraged by the community development project, villagers with shared interests have formed groups where they can voice their opinions on issues that concern them and vote on what actions to take. This, a group for women only, has a proposal before it whether to pay for the construction of a wooden bridge over a waterway or to build a road around it. Everyone is given a chance to talk. No one person makes decisions. Everyone contributes. Behind the vibrancy of this Christian celebration lies another major concern in the Akasa community, health care. It is not to doctors that these people turn when they're ill, but to the church. Healing is a spiritual matter, and the minister has the power to disarm evil spirits. Most of the people here don't know the causes of diseases, even less about how to prevent them. There is no understanding of modern medicines, and any drugs available are used without knowledge or guidance. For this sick man, his faith is his only hope of recovery. Yet the river water in which he's been cleansed may well be contributing to his illness. Across the Niger Delta, health facilities are few in number and limited in resources. Not surprisingly, when the communities began to talk about how they could overcome their problems, health was near the top of the list. I know it's painful when they watch uh, people die because they are helpless. Uh, and so we talked, they knew their problem. They also knew the solution to the problem. And so they are getting together now to do something for themselves. The action taken with the help of the Akasa Community Development Project is to set up health posts in each village. These people have been failed before by hopes of westernized hospitals. But a health post is not a building. It may be just a first aid box available to them in times of need. You will give them two tablets to start with. 
You have a question to ask? How to use of the drugs? The use of the drugs? Yes. In a day, the patient should take a total of six tablets. More importantly, a health post is someone from the community who's volunteered to learn about medicines and to administer them. And teaching them is a qualified doctor provided by the Akasa Community Development Project. Before now, we didn't know some of the health problems we had. With this doctor, we have learnt about some of the problems and found out some are caused by us, some are natural. And we now know how to cure some minor illnesses like headaches and stomach aches. Now the villagers have someone 24 hours a day to help them with basic health care. It may not be much by Western standards, but for the Akasa, it's an important change. If you see, communal effort is successful. They appreciate it and they're embracing it. I can tell you, most people have built their health posts and most people have built boxes to put their drugs and they are training the health post attendants and soon. We think the question of disease outbreaks are just presence like cholera will be a thing of the past. The same approach of self-help also applies to education. that the body is made up of different parts. This body, you see, is made up of different eh, parts. Some communities have state-run schools. Where they don't, a Gemma community is working together, providing an education for its children. Apart from breathing. Through education will come change, and with change may come prosperity. We use it for walking. We use it for walking. We use it for walking. Now sit down. Give her a hand. Close your eyes. What am I doing? So seriously are they taking education. In another village that has no school, a fisherman has given up his livelihood and volunteered to become a teacher. He will be paid by the community, not in money, because they have none but in a regular supply of fish. For at the root of all the problems is poverty. It's the one that the whole community, through the special interest groups, is looking to overcome. And with the help of the Alcasa Development Project, they think they have found a way. We formed this group because we want to buy fish directly from the fishermen, smoke them and sell them. That means we could make money to help our husbands and children. We don't want the outsiders to buy directly from the fishermen, we want them to buy from us. To be able to do that, they need to save what little money they have. It's something they've never done before. So central to the development plans here is a savings and credit scheme. Each interest group collects a fee from its members and this is banked inside special boxes. Cash accumulated is lent to other villagers to fund their own small projects. For the first time, this simple system gives all the villagers an opportunity to escape the poverty trap. Overseeing the operation of all the groups is a council of chiefs. To the western eye, it may not seem unusual for these people to be seen working together, but traditionally they've always acted separately and rarely in such a democratic way. The Akasa Development Project has made us realize how we can help ourselves and save money and it's the interest groups we've now formed that have the responsibility to move things forward. If we can achieve this, it won't be long before we'll have a really positive story to tell.
and the Akasa Community Development Project's responsibilities are to help make that happen. But there are times where the project does need to take a more active approach, to teach and advise the Akasa people and bring them experience from the wider world. Rice production is a good cash earner for the growers and more and more mangrove swamp has been cleared to make way for it. One problem with rice farming is that uh, because of uh, uh, the terrain, they farm on the mangroves, so that uh, if it's expanded indiscriminately, the mangroves are bound to suffer. Apart from that, uh, as they cut down the mangroves, especially at the edges of the creeks, especially navigable rivers or where the river is wide and uh, there are waves because of wind action, it accelerates coastal erosion. And so during their workshop, it was very interesting they sat down and decided what to do. Mangrove swamps were free for anybody to enter and work on, provided it was a native. Now, the chief's council, working along with the people, have stepped in to make sure that there is a control measure. They agreed among themselves and said a buffer zone of mangroves are to be left in every farm by a creek to protect the shore land will be given to the people according to need but having sustainability at the background of their minds sustainability it's the watchword of the entire project it applies to rice to fish and to the forests where indiscriminate tree felling has stopped and planting has begun <laughs> Nothing is started that the communities don't want and can't keep going. If you give to somebody what he wants, he tells you thank you. You throw things at him that he doesn't want. Sometimes you may think it's a wonderful gift. It becomes a nuisance and he thinks you are dirty in his backyard. This project is the best thing that has ever happened to a Casa clan. From the way they have embraced it, you can see they believe in it. I feel that the project should not end with a Casa clan alone. If after they've embraced it fully, and we know it's a sustainable project for them, I will want the project to move to another area in Bielsa State. Since it's not a blueprint, we cannot write out a process and say, follow it this way. But uh, I think uh, it's working. I now come to believe that there is future. We have future now. We have future for our children. There is hope that after a time, the community will grow and will grow in a, a better life. Even a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And this is the first and most significant step of the journey. And it will see us to the end of the journey properly.